Thomas R. Skidmore. I'm really enjoying your stories of your illustrious career stretching back to the old territory days. That said, I have a question or two about Mill Mascaris. Did you have any matches or encounters with Mill? And if so, how did you perceive him as both a wrestler and a person? I deeply appreciate your tales of the wrestling road and look forward to hearing more. Well, as a matter of fact, I did have a match with Mill. I think I was like in my second year. Really? I was worried. I honestly thought you were going to say no. What? I thought, I thought, hey, you, brother, would just, I thought you just never had a match with him. I have world renown. But he came to Atlanta to work for a, uh, what they call a, an opposition group. And because the booker was named Tom Renesto, who was a Mexican-American, and he was part of the infamous The Assassin's Tag Team, which I learned so much from just listening to him. And... uh they had a way of talking and they made them, they made you believe them in the ring and on an interview, but he was booking and Mil mascaras came in and I went into the ring and I was, I was slamming him and dropping elbows on him. And, and I came back, of course, you know, he beat me about five minutes I come back and they said, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? He don't take bumps like that for anybody. I said, what? I said, no, he don't. He don't, he don't take slams and whatever you were doing or whatever. I think I suplexed him one time, short one. He said, he don't do that. And he never stopped me. And I, nobody told me don't bump him. I didn't know he was a big star. I didn't know. I thought he was just a, a really good looking guy as uh, Mill Mascaris over there in the corner. And we had a little five minute match and I bumped him a couple of times, but I did not know that he wasn't supposed to take him or he didn't like to take him. But he didn't say nothing in the ring or didn't stop me. So I did it. That's the last time I worked with him, by the way. I never worked with him again. Uh, I'm just trying to think of where you may have seen him. Did you, did you see him times afterwards? I think he was in WCW briefly when you were in like 1990. I don't think I ever saw him again. I bet next time he saw me, he went, oh, God, I go the other way. Yeah. You like the one guy who had the balls to like suplex him and stuff. <laughs> you know, he's not that big. You know, he's, uh, and he's so, he's so, he's like silk. You know, you can't even feel him. He's so light. So for him to take a hard bump like a slam, that comes as a joke to him. I don't blame him. Mm -hmm. He drew a lot of money in Mexico. Of course, the mask is the way to go in Mexico anyway, because that's that's a part of their culture. But what does Mil Mascaras mean? A thousand masks? A thousand masks, yeah. I've actually okay. got... Uh, I don't know if you can see behind me, but I've got some replica masks, and one of them's a Mill Mascaris mask. Hey, do you have a uh, what was Savio's name? In I haven't got Texas Quang. Dirt. Do you have a Quang mask? No, the, uh, the I don't think there was much call for Quang mask. I, you know what? I bet someone has made one. And uh, well, maybe, yeah, maybe you never know. I, I I want to ask a couple of things about Mill. Um, did you ever see him with the mask off? Never saw him. Did he shower with the mask on? We hear that a bit. Yes, he did. <laughs> he never took the mask off in the dressing room. Never. Uh, dr where was, where Wait was a minute. What if, what, listen, this is the deal yeah. I thought about. What if he was driving a car and they pulled him over? Sir, can I see your driver's license? He spoke English. No speak of English. And he gives us some Mexican driver's license or something. And you're going to have to take that mask off. I wonder, did he ever take that mask off? He did, I believe, in cars and airports. I mean, obviously, he'd have to on airports, even pre-9-11, I imagine. Well, he protected his identity. And I think it's still protected to today. Uh, where, where was this match? Was this uh, Atlanta, did you say? Or was this somewhere else that you had with uh him? 
I think it was at uh, Atlanta on a Friday night, like the big show. What, what was this? I mean, did he have any drawing power in uh, Atlanta <coughs> at that time? Because I always associate Mill going to areas with heavy Latino populations, like a New York or you know the border uh, towns in Texas. Uh, so I was just sort of wondering how can he pop to Atlanta for a week? Well, they didn't know him. I don't know. I think he was there because of Tom Renesso. Yeah. I think they knew each other before. And he was coming through, and they just did it. It wasn't there long. It wasn't there maybe a week, maybe. But see, that's what wrestlers used to do. Say a wrestler was leaving. Let me tell you how stupid I was when I started wrestling. I was wrestling in Georgia, and I'm so stupid. I just thought they wrestled in, like, North Carolina because I'd seen that North Carolina uh, Mid-America tape, I guess, not Mid-Atlantic tape. And a guy told me, he said, you know, you want to go work in California? And I went, well, why would I go work in California? Mm -hmm. He said, they, what? they wrestled out there. I said, they do? I didn't know. He said, i tell you what I'll do. If you want to go, you tell me if you get a month, uh, you know, a head start, say this is July the 1st, you want to start August 1st, tell me. And we can book you all the way across. We'll book you through, you know, Alabama and Mississippi, Texas. And then, or if you want to go up to Tennessee and around, well, I can, we can book you four weeks on the way out there. So, and you won't be working every day, but you'll, you'll pay for your trip. I didn't even know that, but I, I never decided to go to California or even to go anywhere that was more than a, four hour drive from where I was because I had a chance to go to Oregon one time and I'm in, I'm in Nashville. And I said, yeah, cause I had a guy call me, man, you would love it up here. You know? And I said, okay, I got out a Rand McNally roadmap, which is the wrestlers go to tool. And I was looking at Georgia, I mean, Tennessee here and Oregon way up here. Eh. That's a lot of miles and a lot of driving. And I says, I'll kind of take a, I don't know, a little bit of a rain check on that. I don't think I'll come. But I heard a lot of stories about uh, Oregon, but never really wanted to go. Uh, so actually, a couple <coughs> of people wrote in asking why you never went to Oregon. And I actually wrote back to them instead of asking it on the podcast because it was essentially the answer you just gave. But uh, so there you go. There's uh, the answer once again.